Enrique Chagoya was born in Mexico City to a father with two occupational identities. His father worked both at a bank and as an artist, and as a result, Chagoya learned basic principles of art very early on in his life. This unique acquisition of great cultural capital would play a very distinct role in Chagoya's life, for an early exposure to art made it possible for him to live as a successful artist later in life. Further, Chigoya would study political economy at Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México, all the while blending his studies with his artistic side to create political cartoons. So, following his graduation, Chigoya had great cultural capital, much more than the majority of the Mexican population, from both his father's teachings and from a higher education. Chigoya then moved to Veracruz, where he led a group that worked on rural development projects. This experience exposed Chigoya to much more of the politics surrounding Mexico and its relationship with the United States. With these new ideas in his head, he moved to Berkeley, California at the age of 26. Initially, he made a living as a graphic designer and freelance illustrator. However, he started to feel that the economic programs at universities in the area were not adequately educating students on the wide scope of related politics. With many political issues in mind, he turned again to art. He went back to school and got his BFA from the San Francisco Art Institute, and then his MA and MFA at the University of California, Berkeley. Soon his art would be exhibited in museums all over the country and the world. Chagoya's experience is very different from that of many border crossers. In his work, Chagoya addresses the issues surrounding immigration and the relationship between Mexico and the United States, but he does it in a way that is not directed towards the border crossers themselves. Immigrants who face serious struggles in crossing the border into the United States lack the education and cultural capital to understand many of Chagoya's artistic references. In one work, titled The Pastoral or Arcadian State, A Legal Alien's Guide to Greater America, the contrast between the intended audience of the work and those affected by the issues the work addresses becomes particularly apparent. Chagoya comments on U.S.-Mexico border relations, which mainly affect lower-class Mexicans with less cultural capital. So the people most significantly impacted by the issue cannot understand his work. Instead, the work is directed towards people who can understand the various references the work makes to American culture and other themes. This is understandable, for Chagoya himself grew up with great cultural capital and today even teaches at Stanford, where he passes on his knowledge to others of mostly high cultural, economic, and social capital. With his work, the people visiting museums in which it is displayed are also a majority with high levels of all three forms of capital. If Chagoya's intended audience is a group of people with higher levels of capital, it becomes clear that his work is a call to action more than anything else. It is not a guide for illegal aliens, as the title suggests, but instead a piece that attempts to encourage those capable of changing the current state of politics surrounding immigration to do so. It is not at all a bad cause for Jagoya to focus on, and he does this in an effective way. This particular piece is quite intricate. It is a pastoral pastiche, meaning that it is a work that mimics the work of another. The group of figures in the forefront of the piece reference American George Caleb Bingham's Jolly Float Boatman, and the landscape of the piece reflects the work of Albert Bierstadt, who painted a number of Western American landscapes. By using these two pieces, Chagoya takes the dominant white culture of the time and appropriates it. He inverts the traditional way that culture is modified, which is usually from popular culture to the whitewashing of popular culture to the dominance of white culture. Instead, he takes the dominant white culture Brown washes it and creates a new form of popular culture. In a sense, he exotifies white culture in the way that white people have been exotifying Latin American cultures for hundreds of years. 
Elements of this work verify this interpretation. He goes far beyond making the work simply about Mexican immigrants. He includes an Asian man, black people, Native Americans, a man with a turban, and more figures. There is a sign that directs people towards states of utopia, shock, denial, or war, seemingly to embody the progression of attitudes in immigrants, who first see the United States in a utopian light, are shocked when it does not live up to their expectations, deny the fact that they are being mistreated, and eventually end up aggravated enough to launch an attack, symbolically or physically. Speech bubbles throughout the piece stylistically reflect on Chigoya's early work with political cartoons, but the voices in the speech bubbles make vague comments that would be typical of historians analyzing art. Maybe he thinks people will say this or have said this about his work and wants to question these interpretations. Are those really the things the artist is trying to get you to think or say? Chagoya also juxtaposes different heads with different bodies, border patrol officers in Native American garb and showing Humpty Dumpty as the Lone Ranger. He questions profoundly American symbols and figures, commenting on how American culture is forced upon the immigrants who come here. This is cultural imperialism, today's more subtle form of old imperialistic practices, which today extends beyond just immigrants to the United States and plays a role in Latin American countries themselves, where culture from the United States is very present. So where do we fit into all this? Maybe we should start by accepting cultures when they come here by way of immigrants. It is diversity that makes the world rich, and as Chigoya says with his work, we are hurting the world by attempting to whitewash it in Western culture. Cambia lo superficial, cambia también lo profundo, cambia el modo de pensar, cambia todo en este mundo, cambia el clima con los años, cambia el pastor su rebaño, y así como todo cambia, que yo cambie no es extraño.